Hey, what's up, guys? Back at the tabletop with another blade. Yes, Terribly Tactical is on a roll. This one, been out for a while. A lot of guys know about this, and gals, perhaps. It's a classic blade, a switch blade, if you will, an automatic blade. So it may or may not be legal where you live, uh, especially if you live outside of the great country of the United States of America. However, this... Doesn't look too American, does it? That, you know, I could be wrong, but that looks like an AK mag. Like some kind of Russian AK mag or something like that. Yeah, we got the Boker Kalashnikov. This is the 74 variant. They run around 40 bucks. As always, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on where you're getting them, which specific one you're getting. Um, and I'm a big AK guy. If you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you guys know that I love AK-47s, SKSs, AK-74s, all the variants. I think they're awesome guns. There's a lot of history to them. They just run and run and run. They're tanks, super reliable, and uh, I like the cartridges that they're chambered for, you know, traditionally. And I just thought this was cool because the box itself is an AK mag. And then the, the knife is obviously the Kalashnikov. So that's pretty cool. Simple cardboard box though. Here is the item number. It is made in Taiwan. And we'll pop it open get to the blade. I had to get this one. Multicam because multicam is sweet. And uh, then the black blade. Let's check out the action here. Pretty snappy for what it is, um, especially for the price point. It comes out with authority. It locks up solidly. Overall length, give you a couple specs, 7.5 inches. Blade length, 3.25 inches. Blade thickness is 0.12 inches, so not terribly thick, but it is a relatively smaller knife. Uh, handle length here, we got 4.25 inches, and the handle thickness, 0.66 inches. Um, overall weight, 3.6 ounces. We got Aussate steel noted on the blade right there. And then there's the Loger, Loger, Logo, Boker, Automat, Kalishnikov 74. I like that they don't have, you know, made in Taiwan written on the blade. Even though it is, and I know it is, you know, it, it makes it look a little better without having that stamped on the blade. Um, you know, not the best steel. The, the scales are aluminum, and they did a decent job with the paint job, but that's all it is. I don't know if you guys could see in there. The lighting's not the best, but, you know, it's not really finished on the inside. Um, and it is just like some kind of paint, uh, maybe Cerakote, so it will wear off eventually. Maybe give it that battle-worn effect. You know, we've got some standoffs, open flow-through design, which I like, easy to clean. Um, you know, push-button design. They got a little uh, verbiage on, <clears throat> well, let's focus this. Got a little verbiage on the pivot right there. They're all star keys for adjustment and all that stuff. I like the pocket clip a lot. Uh, it's super deep carry. Like, I mean, it's it's a little long for a pen clip, but when this is in the pocket, depending on, you know, what pants or shorts you're wearing, it does completely conceal the knife. So that's nice. It's definitely not as noticeable as having like a handle stick out of your pocket, and it could be passed off as, as a pen or something else in your pocket, not a knife, because it does conceal very, very deep with that pocket clip, which I like a lot. You know, regular drop point uh, style blade, which is flat ground, you know, plain edge, wasn't exactly the sharpest out of box, but also being a softer steel, you can sharpen it to a very nice razor edge, which I like. Um, plunge lock design, so it is, an, an, it is an automatic. We do have a little side to side, but no up and down play, and, and that's kind of normal. Centering, mm, not perfect, but again, it's, it's a $40 knife, and the action is decent. I noticed that sometimes it's quicker out of the handle than others. Like just then it seemed a little sluggish. I don't know if that's because I'm squeezing too tight on the handles and it's slowing down that blade. That seemed like it came out a little quicker. I like the black finish on the blade with the black accents of the screws and the pocket clip and then it sets it off even more with the blacks in the multicam scale. Speaking of the scales again, 
They've got these raised ridges here, um, on the, and, it, and it's textured on the scale. And then there's finger grooves, which actually fit me perfectly. So it's it's not a huge knife. It's more of a medium size to on the smaller end of a blade, but it's perfect, I think, for EDC. And those finger grooves <clears throat> actually fit me. And then the thumb, we've got some nice jimping up here on the scales, and then as well on the spine of the blade. I think it's super ergonomic. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Super ergonomic for what it is. It feels really good in any multitude of grips, and I think it feels the best, as I do with most blades, in the reverse grip. And this could be fought with. Um, you know, you could definitely use it defensively. Again, I'd prefer a fixed blade in that kind of encounter. But if this is all you got, or if, you know, you, you got to go to a secondary or whatever, and you can deploy this thing effectively and get it into action, I would not hesitate to use this. You know, I think it has decent enough traction. The finger grooves, you kind of got like a little bit of a choil going on there to guard you from slipping up on the blade. Uh, it's got a nice swedge on the top of the blade and a decent point. Again, not the sharpest, but I can fix that. And uh, you can definitely... Kill cardboard with this thing all day long, and maybe even bad guys if you had to, you know, in, in righteous self-defense. But this is primarily uh, a good beater entry auto to see if you even like an automatic knife, you know, for EDC or just regular tasks around the house or maybe on the job. They've got a variety of colors and configurations, different blade styles, different handle scales. I'm pretty sure all the scales are all aluminum, but they've got different colors and anodizations or paints or whatever they're using for it. And uh, again, not the greatest steel, but it's not terrible. I would say AUS-8 is better than 8CR13 MOV. If you're familiar, that's on a lot of the cheaper Spyderco knives, and that does just fine. You just kind of got to stay on top of it, strop it, sharpen it up every now and then. And uh, it's cool because a lot of automatic knives, um, you know, Benchmades, Microtex, um, Protex even, you know, they're, they're expensive. And a lot of guys either don't have the money or don't want to spend the money for their blade just to do that, just to open with a push of a button, which there can be pros and cons to depending on how you look at it and your application for it. But it's cool. It's fun to play with. And some of them can be pretty quick deploying. You know, other ones, you can get a regular folder with a thumb stud out just as quick, if maybe not quicker. But I think for the money, for the size, the weight, which isn't bad at all, um, you know, the materials, aluminum scales, there's aluminum scales on $600 knives, you know, so it's, that's no big deal there. It's got good texturing all around the scales, you know, you get a good grip on it. It's authoritative when it comes out. It's ergonomic. And again, not the sharpest thing out of the box, but that could be just this one, and it's fixable. So for the 40 bucks, little less, little more that you pay for it, I think that's a solid deal for an entry auto to get you in the game, you know, to have something cool to play with, add it to the collection, add it to your EDC. It could definitely prove functional for you and useful for you in a variety of aspects. And then you can see, oh, well... Now I, I, I get I get it. I see what what it's about. You know, I, I get why people are spending three, four, five hundred dollars on Microtex or Benchmade Infidels. You know, now that I've experienced it for myself, maybe I'll go pick one of those up. So it's a good entry level, good starter auto, and it's cool, especially if you like AKs. And that's the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Check the links in the description box as always, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace.